we have uh, spent all eight or nine videos that we produce concerning ordinary generating functions and how they're used to solve different types of combination problems. And those videos we have posted on our website at digital-university.org. Um, we have them there in their proper order because each video tries to represent a gap problem that's more complicated than what's presented in the previous video. So, if you go to the website at uh, digital-university.org, all the videos that we have of concrete problems, permutations, combinations, and uh, ordinary generated functions are all there at the website uh, in their proper order for you. What we want to do in this video is introduce the concept of exponential generated functions and how we can use them to solve permutation problems. And remember from our past videos dealing with ordinary generating functions, the deal was if we had, say it's a sequence of numbers like this, and then we multiply the numbers together by a variable x, it doesn't matter what the variable x is, that really is irrelevant. What we're doing is we're taking our series of numbers and we're forming a power series with them. You know, a1 is times a variable x to the first power, this will be times x squared, the next number in the series will be times x cubed, and so forth. And the only proviso we had is that it becomes convenient, as you saw in the previous videos, to choose x so that absolute value of x is less than 1. And really, beyond that, we the value of the variable x doesn't matter. It's just that when we have it in this form, it becomes very convenient because regardless of the value of x, the exponent of x had very significant meaning. For example, if we had x cubed, as you saw in the previous videos, that represented three ways, the ways that we could select three different objects. When we're selecting them, the order doesn't matter. And the number of ways that we could do that was the coefficient of x cubed. Or if we were selecting just n number of objects, and the order didn't matter, how many ways could we do that? It was the coefficient of x to the n. That's what made those ordinary generating functions so useful to solve different types of combination problems. And again, we get a whole series of videos that we did that. Now, what we want to consider here is, say again, we just solve a series of numbers. Only here now, we're going to form another series with them, another color series. Only here we have a first number. Now we have a1 times x to the first power divided by 1 factorial, plus the, ne the next number in the series times x squared divided by 2 factorial, plus the next number in the series times x cubed divided by 3 factorial. And we form we can form a whole power series like this. Now in this case, these take on a whole different significance. Here, for example, the coefficient of x cubed divided by 3 factorial, this coefficient is the number of ways that we can select three different objects when the order matters. So this coefficient here of x cubed over 3 factorial, that tells us the number of ways that we can permute three different objects. Or likewise, if we just had n different objects and we wanted to know how many ways can we permute them, that number would be the coefficient of x to the n divided by n factorial. And to kind of get an understanding as to how all this works, we'll demonstrate that in just a minute right here. We just want to lay out the concept of what an exponential generating function is. This is an ordinary generating function, 
the kind that we worked with in the past 10 or 12 videos. This is an exponential generating function. And the reason why it's called an exponential generating function is you have to go back to calculus. And remember that e to the x equals 1 plus x to the first power divided by 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so forth. And it's a whole infinite series. By the way, this is an infinite series too. And in our ordinary generating function, this is an infinite series too. It continues on out to infinity. But this is the form then, just the general form of what an exponential generating function is. And the reason why it's called an exponential generating function obviously is how it resembles this expression. So, in the past videos we got quite a bit of experience working with ordinary generating functions and using them to solve combination problems. Now let's see how we can use exponential functions to solve permutation problems. For example, let's just suppose we had, say, two squares for two different kinds of objects, and say, three circles. So we have a total of five objects. These two, of course, are the same, and these three are the same. So we could select one, two, three, four, or five objects. Now, when we select the objects, and the order does not matter, so it's a combination problem, remember how we set up the generating function. What we did was, we said, well, for the squares here, we might select zero of them, and that would be x to the zero, which is one, or we might select one of them, which is just x to the first power, or x, or we might select two of them. And that, this generating function then, describes the situation as to how many of these square objects we could choose out of the whole bunch. And then for the circles, we could choose zero of them, which would be x to the zero, or just one. Or we could choose one circle, which would be x to the first. Or we could choose two of them. Or we could choose three of them. So this ordinary generating function described then the number of ways that we could choose to select these three circles. We may select zero, which would be x to the zero or one. We might select one or two or three of them. Then we want to consider selecting all the objects together. What we did was we multiplied the two generating functions together. This generating function times this generating function. Then, for example, if we said, well, we have five objects here. If we wanted to select, say, four of them, well, the order doesn't matter. How many ways can we do that? The answer was we multiplied these two expectants together, and then we determined what is the coefficient of x to the fourth. And that's what we did in all the past videos, this kind of approach. Uh, to use ordinary generating functions to solve a combination problem. Well now, what we want to do is same problem. We're asking ourselves how many different ways can we select amongst these objects? Only now the order matters. So now it becomes a permutation problem. So, what we have then to describe the generating function concerning the squares, it's the same kind of logic. We might select zero of them, which would be x to the zero or one. We might select one of the squares, only now this is represented as x divided by one factorial. Or we might select two of the squares. That would be this then divided by two factorial. 
So for a permutation type problem, it's an exponential generating function that we use to describe the situation. Over here with the circles, you may select zero of them. You may select one of them. To the x to the 1 over 1 factorial. You may select 2 of them. So that would be x squared over 2 factorial, and you might select 3 of them. That would be x cubed over 3 factorial. Now, same logic as before, when we consider all of the objects together, then we multiply the two generating functions together. Now, when we consider this kind of scenario, then we ask ourselves, well, how many different ways can we select, say, four objects where the order matters? Then, the answer to that is, it is the coefficient of x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial, then we multiply these together. We multiply these two generating functions together, and we want to know how many ways can we select 4 of these where the order matters. The answer is, multiply these together and determine what is the coefficient of x to the 4th divided by 4 factorial. And that will tell us then how many different ways we can permute four of these five objects. So, to get an idea of how this works, let's just go ahead and modify these together, these two exponential generated functions. So, here, this will equal 1 and then for the coefficient for x over 1 factorial, we could have this times this plus this times this. So that will be 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial. That will be the coefficient of x squared. Now, continue along, and I have x squared with x. Now I'll look at x squared. So, the coefficient for x squared, we can have this times 1 plus this times 1. So we would have 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over factorial, and we could also have this times this. So we have plus 1 over 1 factorial times 1 over 1 factorial. And there's our coefficient for x squared. Now, we also want to determine the coefficients for x cubed x to the 4th, and x to the 5th. So we continue along. Try to keep everything in focus here. Okay, now for x cubed, we could have this times this plus this times this. So that will be 1 over 1 factorial times 1 over 2 factorial. And we're going to have that again. We have it from this times this, and we'll have it from this times this. And also we can have this times 1. So that plus 1 over 3 factorial. And that's the coefficient of x cubed. Now for x to the 4 plus 
to get x to the fourth power, that would be this times this, plus we could have this times this. So we would have, for x to the fourth, we would have 1 over 2 factorial times 1 over 2 factorial. And again, that comes from this times this plus this times this. So that will be plus 1 over 3 factorial times 1 over 1 factorial. That's our coefficient for x to the 4th. And then finally, for x to the 5th, that would be this times this. So that would be plus 1 over 2 factorial times 1 over 3 factorial times x to the 5th. So, so far all we've done is we have taken the exponential generating function for the squares, the exponential generating function for the circles, and we've multiplied them together. When we multiply them together, this is the expression that we got. This is times x, this is times x squared, this is times x cubed, this is times x to the fourth, this is times x to the fifth. Now, we're almost there. We have one more manipulation that we have to do. For example, if we want to know, well, how many ways can we select four of these objects for the order matters? The answer is, it is the coefficient of x to the fourth divided by four factorial. Here we know the coefficient of x to the fourth. We need to know that coefficient of x to the fourth divided by four factorial. Likewise, if we want to know how many ways can we select five objects from the order of matters, that's going to be the coefficient of x to the fifth divided by five factorial. So we've had to do this a couple more manipulations, and then we'll have our answer. And it looks like we might not have time in this video uh, to do that. So come back, join us in the next video, and we'll pick up where we left off. What we're going to do is determine the coefficient of x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial, the coefficient of x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial, the coefficient of x to the three divided by 3 factorial, and the coefficient of x squared divided by 2 factorial. We have, when we, do, when we complete those manipulations, that will give us our answer to that. That's the number of permutations that we could perform with these different objects. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll finish off the rest of the problem.